In Look East this lunchtime, East West Rail new concerns over one of the region's biggest infrastructure projects. The sun's finally shining on our tourism industry. We find out how they're making up for lost time. Well, another warm day across the region today. Plenty of sunshine and brightness, but will it continue? Well, I'll have the full forecast at the end of the programme. Hello, first this lunchtime, fresh concerns over the environmental impact of one of the region's biggest infrastructure projects. The East-West Rail Line would link Cambridge and Oxford. It's expected to be used mainly by commuters, but people along the route are worried it could also carry freight trains. Campaign groups say it could open the door to a million new homes being built on the countryside along the route. With a consultation ending next week, our science correspondent Richard Westcott reports. One of the big unanswered questions about East-West Rail is how many freight trains it'll carry and at what time of night. They simply haven't decided yet, and there may not be an answer for months. John Kell is a Bedford-based policy analyst and rail blogger. It will cost more money to build the infrastructure to accommodate freight trains and the Treasury might decide not to do that at all. They've already decided not to electrify it, just to save some cash, which is a very questionable decision. It's not going to be a super useful line for freight as things stand. In order to make it really useful for freight, you would have to build other bits of infrastructure to take spurs off the line in different places and they're not currently planned. The proposed routes coming out of Bedford are another cause for concern with campaigners cutting through the countryside rather than following the road network. The campaign to protect rural England says it wants a green railway, but the current proposals would damage the environment. The list goes on. I mean, they start with a diesel rather than an electric railway. They take the railway through an urban area, a, a railway which is going to carry freight as well as passengers. Then they come through pristine open countryside, uh, and they're having to build massive viaducts, you know, 15 metres high. And their biggest concern isn't so much the railway, but the plans to build homes along the route. Well, this is all about the Oxford-Cambridge corridor and the government's plans for one million homes along the corridor, 85 miles long, 20 cities the size of Cambridge, and an increase in the population of 1.9 million people. There's a shortage of housing. Mm -hmm. You've got to build them somewhere. These housing plans for the Oxford-Cambridge aren't aren't anything to do with providing homes for local people, the people of Bedford Borough or the people of Bedfordshire. This is all about encouraging massive population movements to the Oxford Cambridge Arc. The routes, the new houses, the fact it's diesel, not electric, the role of freight. There's still lots of controversy and uncertainty over this project. Richard Westcott, BBC Look East, Bedfordshire. East West Rail told us that it could consider electrification of the line once it was up and running. Viewers in the west of the region can see the interviews, the interview with the company's chief executive on a special programme about the project. That's tonight at half past six. Meanwhile, a demonstration has been held against a proposed new guided busway route in Cambridgeshire. Campaigners in Stapleford turned out to object to the route, which would cut through fields near their village. The parish council's commissioned its own expert report and is urging the Greater Cambridgeshire Partnership to consider other options. We just frankly don't want the busway here. It's not the right mode of transport or in the right place. Um, this is beautiful green belt. It's in the foothills of um, Gog Down. There are alternative routes that have not been properly considered by the GCP. Sports clubs are being urged to offer free sessions to young people to help.